Hi, this is Alba Weinman, and I'm really happy that you're joining us here today. We're going to be talking today with um, two of my favorite people, Geraldine Orozco and Blair Styra. And uh, we want to tell you about this event that's coming up pretty soon, and you're going to hear all about it now. Yes. Hi. And I'm here with, with two of my, my new friend, Blair, which I'm so excited to meet and work with, and my wonderful sister, Alba. And um, we are so excited about the event that we're putting together here. And so, uh, as you know, I'm Geraldine Orozco. Uh, owner of Bay Area Meditation here in San Francisco Bay Area. I do DNA reprogramming and energy work, pranic and quantum energy healing, and um, just very excited and honored to be a part of this. And we have something amazing in store with you for you. And we're going to be working with Blair. So I'm so excited. And Alba, would you like to introduce Blair? Or how yes, I'll tell that? you a little. I'll tell you a little bit about how I met Blair. Uh, I've known Blair probably about four years now, um, where um, I actually met him at a transformation conference in Arkansas and we did a reading and I was so blown away with what um, uh, happened during the reading that I continued uh, every year that I went to this conference, I would uh, once again do readings and now I do readings all the time and Blair and I have become good friends. and. Uh, I have been progressing in my own spiritual path. I am a hypnotherapist. When I first started, I was a QHHT practitioner. And by using all of the information that Tabash has given me, um, I've been able to really prepare myself for what's coming ahead. And a lot of things have changed in my life. And um, because of these readings, I'm prepared. So uh, this is how I got to know Blair. And... Uh, I wanted to bring him over to the United States so that other people can uh, meet him that follow me and that follow Geraldine. So that's how, that's how all of this happened with me. That's so exciting. And um, yeah, so we're so excited to introduce Blair. And so we're going to be talking a little bit to Blair and, uh, you know, we're going to get to know him so you can become familiar with his incredible talent and his art um, and the gift that he has to offer us. The messages, the powerful messages, transformational messages that he has to offer us. And so the event that we're doing now in San Francisco is opening space to do a complete uh, you know, synchronization, uh, realignment, connection, communication with, um, with Tabash, which is who he's going to be channeling. And so I'd love to talk to Tabash. So Tabash, would you like to talk a little bit about yourself and introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about your background. Um, let's start there. How did you get started with all of this? We're so excited to hear all about this. Well, um, first of all, I'd like to thank you both for being who you are and, and, and doing what you're doing. Um, I think that this time in history is such a, a, a time of change, you know, change is the constant. With what we're offering here is giving people that opportunity to, um, in a way, reestablish themselves um, from a higher perspective. Um, I'm coming to you from Wellington, New Zealand, which is my base. Um, I have been working on and off in the States for the last 10 years. I love the energy of that place. I think it's, it's diverse. I think that it's exciting. I think it's a place full of power. And every time I go there, <clears throat> I just feel so empowered and so excited about the opportunities that we're all offering to each other. I've been a channel for Spirit for over 30 years. Um, I've always been the channel for Tabash. Uh, Tabash's background was Sumerian which today is where Iraq and Iran are. And I think Tabash has this uniqueness about him because he's, well, a, a good friend of mine said to me once, oh, Tabash is just a dude. You, you, you can just imagine having a, a beer with him in the, in, the, in the bar, you know? So he's someone that <clears throat> people relate to on, on actually quite a personal level. And, and, and he, you know, when he talks to people, he'll spend a certain amount of time on the stage, but then he has this propensity to want to go out into the audience. So he'll just wander around through the audience and giving people little messages and doing his teachings, but weaving everybody you know, together. 
and 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 he's just full of of honesty full of love when i talk to people when they come to have personal sessions i i explain he's a bit like a life coach a mentor a therapist a teacher a guide an advisor a good friend all sort of roll together in one and and you know he just talks to people about life and who we are and where we're standing and where where we're going from this particular point and obviously at this time in history because we're evolving more as source power you know we realize that we're moving away from what I'll call the old model of reality and the way we defined our lives and we're moving into a whole new model of life reality and in that new model of life reality we're creating new ways of thinking and new ways of feeling and new ways of being and and we are all involved in the power of 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 that right now and and so to be able to speak at, at an event like we're organizing here it's just this other opportunity to launch all of us into a new way of being and thinking and feeling so thank you Geraldine thank you Elba for putting this together to give me this opportunity to talk oh gosh we we are so honored and and so tell us a little bit about so i know you've talked about this a lot i've seen i've seen your interviews and i know you talk about how you first came about uh connecting with him but can you give us a, a quick little summary you know i'm pretty, i'm sure you say the story all the time but just for the, those that don't know you how did you come about connecting with this incredible entity this presence yeah. Yes, yeah. when i was about six years old i always used to say or think that there was something more and and I always say to my parents were well, you know there's something more or I would draw we would drive somewhere and I'd see something or feel something and I would go something more like that my parents would look at me as like who is this crazy child that we have and I didn't know what it was at that age I just it was just the something more to me and so i was born in canada and we immigrated to new zealand in 1971 and so once we got here i just sort of kicked into you know growing up and and living and all that sort of thing and but always in the background i i knew that somehow my life was going to be connected to god in some way but i didn't exactly know in what way that was going to manifest anyway so in my 20s um my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer and at the time it was not a very good prognosis so we just started doing a lot of reading on life after death and all that sort of stuff and it was then that i suddenly realized that what i was reading and what i was in involving myself with was actually that something more that i had you know felt when i was a child and so from that moment on it was like this big door just literally opened for me and you know the way I'll just put it in my terms now so I just went I just turned the light on and and by turning the light on then suddenly it's like ah oh, right I see now and then I just kept developing you know through my reading and my meditations and um I mean never thinking for a moment that I was going to be channeling you know spiritual spiritual entities and uh anyway I remember feeling really strange one day when I was at work like someone was trying to tell me something and by that stage i i knew enough about you know one's connections with spirit so i just assumed oh well maybe it's my guides trying to give me some information and such anyway so i remember coming home and sitting down still feeling this and i just flicked the television on and i remember very consciously thinking i wonder what this feeling is and then suddenly this tv program on channeling suddenly coincidentally came up on 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 the on the radio on the television so um anyway so i watched it and i thought wow you know this somehow's got some connection with you know what i've been feeling so we had our dinner and then i had mentioned to my wife oh you know should we try something you know let, let let's see if we can contact the spirits <laughs> and uh so i didn't really know what what to do or what we were doing so we did the sort of typical thing where you light candles and turn the lights off and hold hands and just see what happens <laughs> and uh anyway something actually did happen because i was sort of holding my wife's hand and all of a sudden i felt this enormous energy going through my body and then for some reason this deep intense sadness 
And then I started getting all these messages in my thoughts. And it was actually my father-in-law. He had passed about a year before. And he was just giving me all this information to give to Kay, which she said was, was very relevant. Anyway, so we sort of finished this and thought, wow, you know, we're onto something here. So um, I just started doing more meditations and practicing. And gradually I started aligning through my meditations with certain guides and teachers and, and, and who told me that I was now in, in a form of training, you know, for working with spirit. Well, it felt the most natural thing in the world for me to do. So I just kept doing that. And then little by little, I started to align to specific teachers who were talking through me uh, and, and just giving gentle philosophies. And, and I was just doing stuff at home. I wasn't doing anything public. So, you know, friends and family members and stuff who were interested in this, you know, would come and we'd have sessions and, and I would just be sitting with my eyes closed and just this information would be coming out. And I was aware at, at that point of what was going on. And then as time progressed, I just started to develop an ability to just sort of move further and further away from, you know, the consciousness of my, my physical reality. And then uh, this went on for, for some time and not really leading anywhere, but, but it was just enhancing my life, changing my life. And then um, my wife and I went away to to the UK to, to spend some time with family. And while we were away, my mother-in-law had passed away. So we, we didn't come back to New Zealand. We stayed in the UK, but we decided that we would go to the Spiritualist Church, actually, in Belgrave Square in London. And so we went, and there was this medium there from Norfolk. Anyway, he came and he gave this amazing message to my wife from her mother. And it was quite extraordinary. And, and then he came up to me. And he said, oh, Spirit wants to talk to me about your career. So I thought, oh, okay, this is going to be interesting. Because at this stage, I had been considering going into medical career. Mm -hmm. and, and so anyway, so the guy came up to me and he says, I can see two rooms. He says, the first room is a room and it's got a building on it and it's got a red cross on it. So I just obviously thought, well, that's a hospital. And then he said, I can see another room and the room is full of light. And I've been told to tell you that whatever you choose, you're going to excel in. Well, I had no idea what the room full of light was. It was just, well, who knows? Anyway, so we came back to New Zealand and I was looking in the paper one day and there's this little tiny ad and there's this woman and she channeled the Egyptian goddess Isis and she was running a public meeting here in Wellington. So I said to my wife, oh, let's check this out. This might be interesting. So off we went and so we're sitting in the audience, about 100 people there. And so this woman channeled ISIS and it was amazing. I hadn't seen her channel at work, you know, in, in a public sense before. And um, just, I was fascinated by, by the information and by the, you could feel the energy, the presence, the energy in the room was, was extraordinary. And then suddenly ISIS stopped and the was into the audience and suddenly pointed and says, you are a channel. And I thought she was talking about some guy behind me. So I'm like, oh, well, that's really cool. You know, like, she goes, no, 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 I'm you. And by my nature, I'm a little bit shy. So I'm sort of like shrinking into my seat as everyone turns and looks at me. And um, anyway, the long and the short of it was I ended up doing a few of the workshops that, that ISIS uh, ran. And it was ISIS who introduced me to Tabash. And she said, you've got this spiritual entity uh, called Tabash. Uh, who wants to work with you? And, and it just made the most complete sense to me. And, and so, so anyway, so I started working on the idea of it. And then Tamash started appearing in my mind's eye, just as a face. And then, you know, that went on for a while. And then, then he started talking to me. And then one day I was having this meditation and I was feeling absolutely blissful. And then he said to me, open your eyes. And I actually remember resisting because thinking, oh, I'm such a good space. I don't want to break this. But he just said, open your eyes, please. Well, I opened my eyes and I wasn't in the room anymore. My, my whole consciousness had shifted out into spirit. And, and I remember sitting, I was sitting on a black and white marble floor. I remember that specifically. And Tabash was standing above me and looking down at me. And he, he laughs. And Tabash has got quite a, a real amazing laugh. He just laughed. And he goes, why are you standing or sitting on the floor? And, and then he got me to stand up and we went and we sat 
And he started to explain to me about the work that we could do and the agreement that we had made and, and all the things that, that could unfold because of that. And again, it made so much sense to me. It was like I suddenly now knew how my alignment with God was to be. Mm. And, and then so from that moment on, it was like the, the agreement was struck. And then Tabash said all these sort of little things I had to do and uh, improvements I had to make, my body spirit. So it was a bit like an alignment <clears throat> uh, on all levels. And also, too, I, I wasn't going to go public with anything until I knew for sure. That, that, you know, I was happy about this and this was real, basically. See. And then after about a year of working with Tabash and developing that energy as such, he just announced to me one day he wanted to go public. So we hired a meeting room and I had no idea how many people were going to show up. I thought maybe five or six or something. But, but in fact, a hundred people showed up. And, um, and then from that moment, it just took off. And so I've run, we ran big public meditation teaching evenings uh, for 12 years every month. And so Tabash would do a teaching and then he'd take the audience through uh, a meditation. And he loved using music and he would weave a story around the music. But the music Tabash liked to use, it wasn't just new age type stuff. He would use anything. Like I remember in a meditation, he used uh, Grace Jones' Slave to a Rhythm in a meditation and it worked you know it was, it was just his, 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 his way he taught the way he was it just it just worked for people and um then uh obviously we're doing the personal sessions and i've done a lot of um work with people with with um terminal illnesses over the years i've done a particular workshop with a doctor hetty ronberg where we've worked on, on grief and spirituality. Um, I've even done run seminars on business and spirituality for businesses who actually asked me to, to put these things together. And we had a radio program here in New Zealand for a couple of years called Talking with Tabash. It was a bit like a talk show. <laughs> and then we changed the format. So Tabash interviewed people. And, and, and I remember once there was a woman who was visiting from, from UK. I can't remember her name now, but she was a channel. So Tabash introduced, uh, he, Tabash, um, he talked to her spirit. So he had these, these two spirits on, on the air, having a bit of a chat together and all that stuff. <laughs> so it was the weirdest interview. <laughs> but, but yeah, so yeah, my life's taken to all sorts of astounding directions, you know, in, in, in this work. And, you know, after all these years, over 30 years now, um, yeah, just, just amazing, the, the, the journey of life, you know. And, and I always think that something T says is, your message to the world is your life. And, and so whoever you are, mind or body or spirit, that's just simply your message. And, mm -hmm. and so I realized, you know, in all these years, so I started in my 20s and I'll be 59 this year. And, and it's like, it's so much common sense, you know. It, it, it's not hard you know, to get into this stuff and, and, and as Tabas would say, to be God on, on a conscious level. And I think we've reached this point in our own human history where we have to be that now. And, and, and obviously we do it on our terms, but we have to stay logged in into this something more that I spoke of before and actually live it. So, so it's not just the, oh yeah, I know that. It, it, it is the, 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 the living of the vibration and the energy. And, and I know that, you know, in this seminar that we're going to present, that Tabash is going to talk to people about, okay, how do you do this? How do you live this? How do you weave this into your everyday life? Not just when you're doing your meditations or attending seminars and stuff like that, but, you know, and here's a good example, okay. My wife has, has, has Alzheimer's, and, and, and so she's been living in a care home for um, over two years now. And it's actually been 12 years, so it's been quite a long time since uh, sort of things started going a bit strange. Anyway, I was driving along the bays, going to, to see her, and I was actually feeling a bit flat about it. And so I just put my thought to spirit and I said, you know, help me, you know, I, I, need, some, I need some guidance here. It's been a long journey. What do I do? 
And they go, be God more. Well, I'm driving along, and I'm like, great, be God more. That's all I need to hear. You know, <laughs> like this. <laughs> so, anyway, so I came home, and I decided I'm just going to stay grumpy, basically. So I went to bed, but then I woke up the next morning, and I thought, come on, Blair, you know better than this. So I thought, okay, I, I'm going to ask my high self. So I said, high self, how can I be God more? How can I be God more today? And it said to me, well, you've got a day off. Why don't you just enjoy your home and you love your garden, so do some gardening and you have to do your housework, so do your housework. And so just have a pottering day. So I thought, okay, if that's what my high self says, that's cool. So I did that, but I was doing it aligned to the God energy. Mm -hmm. But I just felt through the whole day, just so light and happy and, and connected. And, and, and I just, it made me realize it's actually really simple. You know, we just find this by just living our lives. And I was ironing some linen shirts that I've washed. And you know, linen, it just goes all wrinkly and crinkly. So I had to iron them up. And I, I thought I'd give my, my maid in New York a call on WhatsApp. So I popped the phone up on the door and I got my ironing board out. So we're chatting away there, you see. And all of a sudden I said to him, I'm being God more. <laughs> and, 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 and then he goes, what are you doing? What are you talking about? And, and so I explained the situation. And, uh, and I said, look, you know, this is it. You know, we don't have to seek it out in big, big events and big deals all the time. We can find it by ironing a linen shirt mm -hmm. or, 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 you know, vacuuming your carpet or something like that. And, and, and obviously, you know, my higher self could have said, you know, have a meditation, that's really important, or, you know, read that book, or, or go to a yoga class, or, or whatever. But, but it told me what to do, and, and, and it felt right, so that's what I listened to. And if it had said, you know, sign up to do, you know, some yoga thing or seminar, I would have done that, you know. And, and, but it, it, it's not always about big things. It's about just living your life. And this is the thing I've realized more and more as I go on with this through the years, how easy it is, how simple it is, you know, because we're, we're, we're gods, we're in bodies, and we're just living lives. And, and if we pay attention to, to just living, then that's how we get directed towards, you know, opening up a bigger door or, or evolving in some greater way. And, and I think that, we put a lot of expectations onto ourselves when we get involved in our spirituality, you know, and we think we have to always be doing spiritual things all the time. But, 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 you know, sitting in your garden and having a nice cup of tea is, is a sacred experience. You're doing a spiritual thing. You're hanging out with friends. I went to a all night bachelor party <laughs> recently. It was actually all day, all night. And, 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 and so, but my whole concept, I'd say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be God doing this. And such a, a great time with mates. And, uh, you know, we were doing all the guy stuff and things like that. But, you know, when you add, when I added the God part of it to me, then it just made the experience even greater. And, 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 and so, so it's, it's in life. We don't just find it by our meditations and things like that. We find it in everyday event that we're experiencing. And I know lots of people have experienced that as well. And I know that, you know, Tabash is going to be talking about this, um, you know, in the seminar in San Francisco. So, but uh, I've talked too much. I always talk too much. <laughs> so. Oh, no, that is so important. And I really want to thank you for saying that because you're absolutely right. It's the integration of that, you know, mm -hmm. the God self into the physical yeah. and living through that. That's so important. So, yeah. and you actually answered my next question, which was, or, 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 well, I'll let you complete, but what do you think is the message that Tabash really has to deliver us? I mean, and do you think that is his main message? Or what do you think it is that he is here to represent and give us the humanity in this time and space? That's so easy to answer because he, he always says that um, we are all God. <laughs> and, and what is God? God is the most supreme way we can experience our lives. And, and so, so what he's doing is that he's teaching people <clears throat> that this is who we are. That there's no degree of separation between what God is and what we are. You know, we're the same vibration. And so therefore he's teaching people 
you know, when we align to that vibration, then we already have the answers. We don't have to find anything, you know, and, and something he said recently um, at some seminar that I spoke of, which was don't, don't get over focused on where you're going and what you have to become, but instead pay attention to where you're standing because where you're standing is where all the power is. And it's your belief system at that time that will define how much of that power you're going to use. So if your belief system is, I am God living my life, you will access 100% power. And, and, and that just like, there it is. So there's his message, that, 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 that's his overall message. Mm. It's so beautiful. And, and so when you go and you're in front of an audience, how do you tune in with the people, the audience? How do you know where to go? I know that uh, Alba was telling me that you kind of interact slightly with the audience. How do you do that? Can you tell us a little bit about your process and what we can expect to experience? Okay. Yeah, okay. So, well, as Blair, I have no idea what, what Tabash says or, or so, you know, it's his process, not mine. <laughs> so, okay. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so what he does is he just, it's like he just watches people as a vibration mm-hmm. and, and, and he'll just wander through and he'll be looking around and, and, and he will go up to someone and because he sees a frequency in their energy and, 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 but I've noticed that in, in what he does, it's quite clever is he weaves what he's doing into some sort of connection with everybody. It's like a teaching that, that, that mm-hmm. goes on. You see. So, and he'll, it make, he'll make it people interact with each other, you know, and 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 so so he's very good at um, pulling people's very vibrations in and making people a part of what he's actually talking about. So it's actually quite interactive in, in lots of ways. He would never ever um, intrude anyone's space, you know. So so if someone's sitting there and putting up their walls and the barriers and stuff like that, is definitely putting out an energy that says, "Don't come near me," <laughs> you know, like that. <laughs> well, he probably will. <laughs> 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 but um, no, he, he's a great respecter of, of, of people's vibrations and energies. And uh, but it, it's 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 a very individual thing. It depends on the audience, you know. And and you know, obviously, there might be some audiences which they just want to listen. And 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 other times, he he can go to the audience where. Um, it, it's so interactive and it's just amazing. I remember in a, a transformation conference that I spoke of, and there must have been about 800 people at this particular conference. And Tabash was very interactive. He was all over the place with people and stuff like that. And then he got back on stage and he was winding down. And we had brought with us this amazing piece of music called Soul Food, <clears throat> which was indigenous music from Australia and New Zealand. But brought in with like a big rock beat as well. Anyway, so so it starts off very hauntingly and then it just goes up and up up a few a few rhythms. Anyway, but Tabas got 800 people up dancing. Because he sort of started talking and he's got anyone out, come on, make a move. Anyway, so everyone was was just moving around and he's talking the whole time. And then afterwards, just the energy in that room was extraordinary. It just blew the roof off, you know, the, 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 this whole room. And no one wanted to leave because that was the end of the, the seminar. And everyone just hung around. No one was going anywhere, you know. They were just, the love was in the air, so the stuff, it was extraordinary. And I stood there when I came, I came back at this stage and I'm standing there and I'm thinking, I so love what I do. You know, there's just this vibe and this energy like that. And I mean, just thinking about it, I'm just tingling all over. But, um, yeah. But, I mean, you know, when spirits observing things, they're, they're seeing us as energy. They're seeing us, our souls, they're seeing ourselves as a vibration. And, and, and so that's where they're able to come up and pass some information on. And, but, you know, what they're giving us is, hey, this is a suggestion. They're not saying this is what you have to do. Mm-hmm. This, this is, okay, well, based on what I'm seeing, you know, here's, here's an option, here's a possibility. You know, it's not the gospel truth according to spirit. You know, we have our free will. 
but spirit saying, okay, well, here's an option, or here's a possibility, or, here's an, or have you thought about it from that perspective? And, and so, you know, and then we make the decision about what we, we, we do with that. And you know what it reminds me of? of um, I was having a meditation once, and I found myself going out into spirit, and there's a spirit energy doing a lecture on God. So all these other spirits out there, you know, because you can go out to all these amazing lectures out there. And uh, <clears throat> so I thought, oh, this might be interesting. So this lecturer, the spiritual lec lecturer is going, never ask God for an answer. Because God can never give you one. And the audience is sort of like, oh. <clears throat> and, 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 you know, if you take the concept that we are all God, then you have the answer. And if you're asking for the answer, then you're not believing that you're God. Therefore, you don't believe you have the power. Mm. <laughs> and, and then, but if you want to mm. ask God anything, the guy mm. says, he says, say to God, hey, God, can you give me more power of life so it can go to the part of me that has the answer so I can get on, get on with things, basically. And, and they said, that's how you use it. You ask for more power. You ask for more life. You never ask for the answer whether that's God or even guides and things like that, you know? And, 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 and so, so it's always about, we're the ones with the answer, but when we ask for more power, God's going to go, absolutely, here, have, have, a, have all of it, basically. And, and I've put this into practice, and it works, yeah. you know? And, and, but the moment I ask for something, then it's like you get a blank, and, and, and so what you need is, is you need the power to create the answer because we're the creator. And I think this is, this is for how we are now. It may have been different 50 years ago, but for who we are now and what we think now and what we feel now, I think that's how it works because we're more integrated. We're more aligned with, with everything. And, and therefore, you know, we're, we're a lot more sophisticated, a lot more qualified, if you like, in who we are in mind, body, and spirit. So therefore, it's not, no longer about, you know, or give it to the universe or ask God for the answer. It's in fact, oh, hang on a minute. I'm the one with all the answer. I'm the one with all the power. I'm the one who has to make it work. But the moment I am aligned to the source, then I can do that. Bang, 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 just like that. And, and so it's, it really comes down to the belief of who you are and, and, and not who you have to be and, and not that you are part of something, but you are everything. Mm -hmm. I, know, I, know, I know people can find that under, hard to understand sometimes, but, um, you know, in my own experiences, and I think you guys have had similar experiences, you know, it, it, it's, it's how it works. Yeah. You know, and there's the simplicity of it, basically. So, yeah. Ab so that's a, that a long answer to a short question. <laughs> no, that's a fabulous answer to the question. So, and so, I mean, this, I'm so excited and so in alignment with your message. Absolutely, we are gods. And the more we come in, I guess what people are searching for is the tools or, or just that key little message to help them embody that and just be that. So that's what we hope to bring in this incredible event. And um, Alba, did you have anything you wanted to say? Yes, I would like to uh, speak with Tabash. You want to talk to Mr. T? Yes. Hi and come through for about five minutes. Is that right? Yes. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, you know, five minutes. Tabash is like five hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, okay, what I do, I'll explain to everybody, is I'll just close my eyes and I just go through a little thing in my head which allows me as Blair to vacate the body. And then uh, it doesn't take long. It takes up to 20 seconds. So it's, it's a quite a short transition. And then Tabash starts coming through. And um, I'm one of those channels who completely leaves my body. So Tabash will engage 100% with my body. He'll use my eyes. He'll use, you know, everything. So, but um, yeah, so you can ask some questions or just listen to what he has to say. But um, anyway, I'll talk to you very soon. Okay, bye for now.
Hello, how are you? Hello, Tabash. Hi, nice Tabash. To... Hello, Geraldine. Nice to see you. It's a pleasure to, uh, to talk to you. I'm very excited about having an opportunity to talk to, you know, once again, people in, in America. And always remember that you're all putting out a call all the time. You know, mind one, a body one, a spirit one. And as you put that call out, then it's like, it's like throwing a net out to go fishing. And, and when you throw that net out, you know, you're going to pull it back in. And sometimes you might get some stuff you have to throw back. And, and, and other times you think, oh, maybe that's got to you. I've never seen that before, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what I can do with that. And other times it's like, that's exactly, you know, what I need at this particular point. And, and so in human nature at this point, what you're doing is that you're creating this, um, I'm going to call it a new environment. And a new environment is an environment that's made up of lots and lots of components. And so if you think about it from this point, everything has an environment. You have intellectual environment, spiritual environment. People are an environment. Feelings are environments. You have your internal environments, your external environments. We believe that this is a time where it's very necessary to be very conscious of the environments that you yourself are creating for yourself. For each environment will carry a vibration. And if that vibration is in harmony with who you are, then you will get the best of that environment. And so if you look at the structure of humanity at this point, you're needing to be very specific about your collective environment because it's that collectivity that defines outcomes. So if you look at your individual roads that you're traveling, relationship environments, your work environments, all those sorts of things, if you have them nice and even and everything is productive for you, then what you're creating is a collaboration of the vibration of those environments. For the sake of the teaching, imagine it's like each environment is like a disc and the disc is spinning and its vibration is in harmony with all the other environments. Because the energy is in harmony, it establishes a link with all the other environments. And so therefore they are feeding each other in a complementary fashion. So the collaboration establishes a collectivity which supports your life. So when you are involved in environments that are in harmony, your life will be highly supported and then you will get a result. If, for instance, you're involved in an environment that is no longer productive to you, imagine one of those environments suddenly shuts off. So the link, there's a missing link then, you see. So what happens that the energy goes around, well, it stops, falls. And then this is how issues are created. This is how problems are created. Now, the interesting thing about environments is when it comes in one's regard to approaching them, you don't necessarily have to alter the environment or, or get rid of the environment. You know, what you do is that sometimes you can reorganize an environment. I've talked to couples who come to see me with um, relationship counseling. And, and they've been in the firm belief that they have to separate, they have to part. <clears throat> and one of the first things I've said is, do you believe it's productive for both of you to actually change the environment before you actually get rid of it? And they thought, oh, I hadn't thought about it from that point. It's like re reorganizing the furniture in the living room to give you a different look. And I think we've got, you know, sometimes people put themselves through unnecessary change and, 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 and alter things too dramatically or go through stuff they do not need to, where all they needed to do was change the furniture around. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, oh yeah, that looks much better there. I, I never thought I could feel that way from that perspective or that. It's like you just put a new light onto the, onto the situation. Okay, there are definitely situations where that environment definitely has to go. And, and, and yet what you do is that you can't have a gap. You always have to establish, you know, the environments that work for you. So 
you know, my challenge to, to all of you is, is to look consciously at your environments, the way you think, the way you feel, the way you live, how you're positioning yourself. You know, each day, just each day, you know, and each day consider, okay, what are the environments that I'm participating in? Do these work for me? And, and you know, don't freak out about it. Just stand still and think, okay, hang on a minute. What's the simplest thing I can do? Everyone gets into such a hoo-ha about everything. <laughs> and and so, so you have to just stand still and, you know, think about what Blair was going on about before, which was, you know, your gods. You already have the answers. So when you stand still, then it's like, oh, what the God of me do here? And, and okay, obviously, you want to make sure that you're observing what your environments are, but participating in them, but also, where is this taking me? Am I happy about where I'm standing? And if you're not, then again, it doesn't mean you got to sign up for 600 seminars. You know, it's, it's more a matter of, you know, one is enough. And, and so, so it's about you know, the one in San Francisco is enough. And so <laughs> that's all you need. <laughs> so you just stand firm in your position. And, and, and then from that place, listen to what life is saying to you. And when it talks to you, once it said what it's needed to say, it won't need to say that anymore. So know when to put things down. When Blair was driving up to CK the other day, and he was sort of thinking, I'm sick of driving up here every day. But then he looked up on this building, and there was a sign that said, lighten up. <laughs> and he burst out laughing, so he automatically lit up. When he was driving home, he looked to see the sign. It wasn't even there. Mm. So it was there when he needed it, but when wow. he didn't need it, it was yeah, yeah. And that's where life is like that sometimes. Think about, you know, you people have often gone back to find something that made you happy, but it wasn't there anymore. Or, or a situation, or an event, or, or whatever. And suddenly it's just, they're gone. And, 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 and so because that was for that moment, for that situation. And, and, you know, your aim is to always stay clear Stand still, stay clear, keep the, keep the page clear. And, 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 and then, you know, you, you, you do what you can when you need to do it. You know, you don't have to store all up too much. You know, you don't have to shop for all of life for the rest of your life. You know, you, you, your house isn't big enough for that much. You know, you have to just take on board what, what is necessary just for the day. You know, there's my goes into his fridge the other day, opens it, and Blair has nothing in his fridge apart from, you know, the, uh, the odd little essentials, you know, and then it's sort of looking like, there's nothing in your fridge. And Blair goes, oh, it's because I'm what I need. So, so I don't need to store a whole lot of stuff up. And, and then Blair said, well, that's how I try, try to live my life. You know, when I need it, I'll get it. This is shoes, actually, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> and so, <laughs> but, but, you know, it, 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 it's about allowing yourself to recognize, keep it easy, keep it simple. You know, allow yourself to just take what's necessary, but you don't have to store stuff up too much. Which, and people do that not just with things, but they do that with thoughts. They do that with feelings. They do that with people, you know? And then I'll get around to that. I'll just keep it over there for a while. You know, I'll buy that just in case it might be useful to me. You know, that sort of stuff. Or hold on to that because I might need it. 30 years later, it's still hanging in your wardrobe and you've never worn it. And, and so, so it's, it's literally about, you know, what am I doing? I'm, I'm cluttering my life up with mind stuff, body stuff, spirit stuff even. You know, that's not necessary anymore. I have to go into let stuff be. Let stuff go. You know, if it's useful to you, then you use it. But when it's not, then that's where you have to consciously think, is it important for me to put that down and let that go? And if your higher self says yes, then do. If it says, oh, no, hold on to it, then hold on to it. And that could be anything. So what, what, what's happening at this point in human history is you're, you're, you're letting stuff go. But it's difficult because 
your human nature is so used to define itself through what you've held on to because you've made an identity out of that. But not just that, you created a security around that. And now it's time to be secure in a different way. And in that different way, it actually evolves you. So you're in a state of evolution within your God nature so you can direct your human nature in much more productive ways. Mm -hmm. and, and so, so that's why in all this stuff that humans are doing now, it's actually all about feeding the God in them, feeding the part of them that, 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 that's, you know, investing in them. You know, you look at the work that both Alba and Geraldine do, it's the same thing. It's showing to people, you know, what, what is truth. And, and, and so therefore, but human nature has to decide what it's going to do with that truth. And, and this is why it's so important for people to investigate the way that they can be God more, as I'll put it. So, anyway, that's all I have to say for the moment. So, Fine. Tabash, nice to talk. Tabash, what can we expect of those who attend this event with you? I would expect nothing of them, <laughs> you know, but I'd like to think that it would be a gathering of, of, of gods because it's not just about the information that we're all passing on. It's about the sharing and, and the, the caring and, and the alignment that will be made by like-minded individuals participating in, in such an event. And so obviously, you know, as, as a person who's participating as much as teaching, I will you know, talk to people about being gone more. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, we'll see what unfolds, but uh, I think people should go, I'm going to go there and I'm going to be God more. I'm going there to, to become God more. And I'm going there to, to also share with others that they can be God more as well. And I think that, you know, it's so important for this planet now to love. And, and, and the love is, 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 is something that's, you know, needs to unfold. I mean, just recently in New Zealand, they had this terrorist attack down in Christchurch where some man went and shot 50 people in a mosque. And, and it's quite extraordinary because Kiwi being a small country, New Zealand's a very small country, and, and yet the people are very aligned to supporting their Muslim communities. And, and what, what's happened is just amazing. You know, there's all these amazing vigils and there's a big gathering up, the road the other day, and it's just all about everyone being together, basically. See, mm -hmm. and I think that in any seminar or event, it's all about being together. And then, because it's never, never just about let's go and hear Alba, let's go and hear Geraldine, let's go and hear Tabash. You know, it's more let's go and hear ourselves, mm -hmm. and let's all speak to each other through our sharing and our conversations and, 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 and whatever, you know, that, it, it, it's what it's all about. It's about the bigger picture. So. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tabash. My pleasure. We'll see you over there. Okay. I'll bring Blair back. Okay. Bye, Geraldine. Okay. Bye. You're, you're just this little picture up there at the moment. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, it's Bye -bye. Actually, that's all right. You know, when I'm looking at technology, I find that quite quite fascinating, you know. So I got Geraldine on the big picture now, and then I've got me, and then I've got Albert, the little ones. But isn't that really what everybody is like? Yes. You know, when, when you're focusing on something, then that becomes a bigger picture. And then when you don't, then it becomes a little picture, but it's still there. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Great point. Yeah, Great analogy. Was, Zoom you analogy. Understand, you want to understand how God works? Look at Zoom. <laughs> All you have to do. <laughs> well, thank you, Tavash. Okay, I'll bring Leo back. Bye for now. Bye bye. <clears throat> well, that felt longer than five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. Wow, Pleasure. thank you. That was amazing. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Yes. He's always got a lot to say. So. <clears throat> Very good. Well, thank you for participating with us today, Blair. Um, it's going to be wonderful seeing you in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area and doing this event with you. It's going to be wonderful. Yep. 
I am 100% agreement. You know, it's going to be great. So, and um, thank you guys for organizing this. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a special time. So for everybody concerned. So. Thank you so much. Well, we're so excited. So we're going to put this uh, video out and we're going to put up, uh, tickets are going to be posted on, is it Alba's website? Yeah. You can find tickets on Alba with all the information. It's going to be in the San Francisco barrier. We're going to get something very nice and uh, accommodating to airport arrivals. So if you guys are traveling, coming international, please do. We are honored to have you join us at this incredible event. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email us. And uh, yeah, we're just happy to see you there. It's going to be amazing. So um, from all of us, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.